So first of all, um, I'd really like to thank Christoph and Celine uh, for hosting this event. Uh, I really enjoy it and I'm learning a lot, so thank you. Um, so I, must, I met most of you already, uh, so I'll just briefly in introduce myself. Um, my name is Elliot Fokker. Uh, I'm based in Utrecht, Utrecht University, and I'm mainly uh, working with these guys. And uh, in this presentation, uh, we'll be looking at physics-based pore pressure monitoring using seismic velocity variations. So we're min monitoring physics-based. So what physics do we need? Well, when we use passive image interferometry, we mainly look at uh, surface wave velocity changes. And we can link those to shear wave velocity changes through sensitivity kernels. Um, but instead of using a shear wave sensitivity kernel, we are going to look, uh, we're, we're going to link it directly to pore pressure variations. And uh, to do that, we introduce here the concept of pore pressure sensitivity kernels. Um, well, such a link looks like this, where we have on the left uh, surface wave velocity change as a function of frequency. On the right, we have pore pressure change as a function of depth. And in between there is the pore pressure sensitivity kernel. We derived that this pore pressure sensitivity kernel can be obtained just by a, a simple mu multiplication uh, of the shear wave sensitivity kernel and the factor before uh, that, is the, um, uh, that consists of the elastic parameters, so the shear modulus and the pressure derivative of the shear modulus. Well, let's look at an example. So this is uh, a shear wave sensitivity kernel uh, in the uh, subsurface of Groningen. So you can see here that for the higher frequencies, we are most, mostly sensitive to the very shallow subsurface. But if you look at the lower frequencies, you're also uh, sensitive to the deeper parts. We have models for the, uh, for the elastic parameters, the shear modulus and the pressure derivative of the shear modulus. Uh, so we can calculate the pore pressure sensitivity kernel. And uh, that looks like this. So that's just a multiplication of the left figure with the middle figure. Uh, and that gives us this, uh, this pore pressure sensitivity kernel. And I need to say here that uh, the color axes are logarithmic. So if you uh, look at this figure, you see that uh, it decays very quickly uh, with depth. So we're mainly sensitive to the very shallow part of the uh, subsurface. So that's, uh, that's a limitation of, um, of measuring pore pressure variation using seismic, uh, seismic velocity change. Let's look at some data. So this is uh, the Netherlands, the north of the Netherlands, and uh, the, we zoom in on uh, the Groningen area where uh, we have the Groningen gas field. Uh, but luckily, uh, because there is this, this gas field, we have a very dense network of borehole geophones. And uh, we apply passive image interferometry to uh, obtain seismic velocity changes. And for each of those indicated regions, we have a mean seismic velocity change. Well, that looks like this. Uh, so all the different colors uh, correspond to uh, a different uh, region uh, that's shown here on the left. And uh, the vertical axis uh, shows different frequency ranges. So you can see some different features here for different frequency ranges, uh, but I'll not go into detail now. Um, I think it's most interesting now to, uh, to see if we can invert for pore pressure variation. So for each of those indicated regions, we also computed the, uh, the pore pressure sensitivity kernel. And, um, well, if you invert that, um, and I'll show you on my poster how we did this, um, you can get a pore pressure, uh, pore pressure variation as a function of time, depth, and region. And uh, that's shown here on the right. And um, I'm not sure if everyone, see, everyone can see this, but... Um, <laughs> um, so, one interesting observation here is that if we look at the deeper models for pore pressure variation, all the different regions look quite similar. Uh, but if we go to the, uh, the shallower ones, we start to see an increase from the southeast towards the northwest. And this is consistent with um, uh, 
the presence or absence of clay layers in those regions, so we can explain this. Um, and I see that uh, I need to very, go very quickly. Um, so we also have a measurement of, uh, of uh, pore pressure variations uh, here at the piezometer uh, that's, that's located there. So that's the purple area. And you can see quite, quite clearly that the black line, which is the, this measurement, uh, is corresponding very well to the purple line. So we are getting very close. So main conclusions um, is that we can use the concept of pore pressure sensitivity kernels to invert velocity changes uh, for pore pressure variation. Um, limitation is that we uh, can only look at natural variations in a very shallow subsurface. So if you want to know all the details, but also the challenges, uh, I invite you to come to my poster. And um, thanks a lot for your attention. Thank you.